Good morning, I'm Rick Collins. In our last session of Shop Talk, we discussed tube threads and port threads, and today we want to go into the distinguishing characteristics of each thread. Uh, it's important to be able to readily identify these characteristics, and that will help you in the end determine what, uh, exactly what thread you have. So I've got examples today of both port threads and tube threads. So let's start by looking at a few tube threads. JIC is one of the most commonly used threads in the industry. Uh, this is a tube thread. It's gonna be on the uh, end of a hose or a tube. And you can readily identify JIC because of the, the flared cone or the 37 degree flare on the end of the thread. Another very common thread in the industry in industry is going to be the O-ring face seal. Uh, another very easy thread to identify as it has a O-ring in the face, O-ring face seal. Uh, another common tube thread would be the DIN metric, uh, metric compression. It goes by a number of different names, but this is the true uh, metric and this you'll find on the end of a hose, on the end of the tube, etc. And let's go over to the a little bit less common. You're going to see this in oil, water, and gas. The 45 degree flare. 45 degree flare is very similar to the JIC in appearance, but the cone is flared at a 45 degree angle and the threads do not interchange. There are different thread pitch and diameter. So those are the most common tube threads. Now let's spend a minute talking about the uh, port threads and the dis distinguishing characteristics of the port threads. Uh, one of the most common threads you're going to see in the U.S. is going to be SAE. It goes by a number of different names. SAE, O-Ring Boss, uh, if you'll notice on this thread, there's an O-ring. This thread cannot seal without that O-ring. Uh, very easy to identify and distinguish. It's a parallel thread, meaning it does not taper, and it must have an O-ring. Another very common thread that you'll, you'll find uh, is going to be NPT. You'll notice on this thread, there is no O-ring, and it does have a slight taper to it. In our last session, we talked about the need for NPT to have some type of a seal, whether it be Teflon tape or Teflon sealant. That's a, a requirement of the NPT. Uh, here we have a BSPP with a cutting face seal. It's a parallel thread. So because it's parallel, it has to have something to seal. If you'll notice, this does have a seal ring, a soft seal. We've got another variation of BSPP. This has an external seal, a bonded seal. This thread too is parallel. It cannot seal without that seal ring or without that bonded seal. And finally, we have a true DIN metric port thread. Again, it's a parallel thread. It's uh, built to metric specifications but you must have that, that seal ring, that O-ring, that external seal in order for that to be a leak-free connection. An example of something you'll commonly see in the field is going to be a port adapter. In this example, we have JIC here and SAE here. You will take this type of fitting, thread it into a port or a, uh, uh, a manifold into a valve, a cylinder, etc. And this would convert that port into a thread that you could attach a hose or a tube to. Now I want to give you a tip for when you're identifying threads in the field. Here we have a uh, JIC to NPT adapter. The distinguishing feature of the, the NPT threaded into this manifold is that you can see from a distance there's threads exposed. That's not a mistake in this example. That's the way NPT works. You can see clearly at a distance threads exposed. That's an indication that this is a tapered thread. 
On the other hand, we have a valve section here. This valve section, there's no threads exposed. Reason why is this is a parallel thread, so it must seal on some type of O-ring or soft seal. That's the way this particular thread in, 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 tends to work. Thanks for your time today. Look forward to talking with you next week on Shop Talk.